You guys have no idea how annoying that song is. <laughs> how many times can you hear it in one when, movie? You know, being actually alive in the eighties, <laughs> it was it was everywhere. Welcome, everybody, to the Salty Nerd Podcast. This week, we are talking about Eddie Murphy's Beverly Hill Cops franchise. Uh, we watched, some of us watched all of them. We did. I didn't. It was too much. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, that seems like too much. By the time we watched the new one, I was like, I'm kind of over it. I'm going, I'm going in with an attitude. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good plan. You never watch all four at the same time, because then by the time the new one, you're like, ugh. You never go full Beverly Hills Cop. Yeah. Um, I had a great time with the newest one that came out on Netflix. And I was actually, I had such a good time with it. I'm shocked that it wasn't actually a theatrical release. Because I was like, yeah. this was good. That's I had a what really I, good time with it. That's what I hate about Netflix. It's because they can make movies. Usually. Usually they're shit. Usually they're shit. <laughs> but every once in a while. He's pissed off that they're not still shitty. <laughs> every once in a while, one comes out. That's part of a storied franchise. Yeah. Something that, you know we're attached to from our younger days or whatever that part of a it's part of a franchise that deserves a theatrical release this was a big budget movie with yep. big stars it did and it absolutely deserved to be in the theater for two or three weeks before being on <laughs> Just a, stu- a, stupid, <laughs> a stupid streaming show That's you, so you, sad. I know. <laughs> but you gotta take what you can get i get it i mean you can you can watch furiosa now and yeah. streaming yeah yeah you, you know or, or whatever it came out last it's month. impossible to find like, yeah. budgetary information now because it just immediately goes to yeah. streaming but what? this was made for netflix <clears throat> it was never intended to be in theaters as mm-hmm. far as i know and um that's kind of sad to me because this is a a-list triple a movie as far as i'm concerned i so. agree uh we started off we wanted to because i've actually never seen any of them same. <laughs> all the way through same uh, so I watched the first one, and uh, I didn't really like it that much. Do you have a synopsis for the first one? I do. I have a synopsis for both. Oh, cool. Okay, so let's do the first one, and okay. you can do, like, budget, box office, all that stuff. Okay. Go ahead, Jude. Eddie. Beverly Hops Kill. Uh, kill. Beverly Hops. <laughs> Beverly Hills Cops. Beverly Hops Kill. <laughs> <laughs> a totally different movie. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the asylum version. It's not like a bunny rabbit movie. <laughs> Beverly Hops Kill. Like t- it all went down at a brewery. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you go ahead. 1984, Beverly Hills Cop. Rated R with a runtime of one hour, 45 minutes. This had a budget of $13 million. Get the fuck out of here. $130,000. Get the fuck out of here. No, no I cannot. It's serious. <laughs> what do you think this brought in? Oh, I don't know. Beverly Hills Cop, uh, Eddie Murphy in his prime, arguably. Um, how much does it make? Uh, or how much did it cost? 13. Thir- that's it? Uh, I don't know. 75 million. Later? Yes. I'm going to go 100 plus. It was the highest grossing movie of the year. It made $316 million. Get the fuck out of here. Shut the fuck up. Aquel Foley just decides to go undercover without getting approval and better not mess up again or he's going to be in big trouble. But when his dumbass friend rolls up to Detroit with stolen 80s bad guy shit and gets murdered, (laughs) Aquel heads on down to California to nab himself an unnecessarily evil 80s bad guy. Discuss. Hmm. I didn't like this first one. Really? I liked it. I, I thought it was funny. I didn't. I don't know. There's something about 80s Ed, Eddie Murphy that I'm just like, meh. <laughs> you mean when he was famous? <laughs> that laugh. Oh, my God. When, when I hate was, that laugh. When he was famous and good? I mean, you, you mean his actual laugh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that was because he did it so this, often. Listen, man, that was this movie was quintessential Eddie. Mm-hmm. This was everything that's funny about Eddie in a movie. I mean, they even made he even made fun of himself a little bit in this movie. Did you see the scene where he's walking through Beverly Hills and the two guys in the leather suits mm-hmm. walk past him and he laughs at yep. him? Well, those are his outfits from, I, his, yes. from his from his from his I got that videos. joke. Yes, that was pretty good. You know, just stuff like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. My my, my wife and I we watched this movie together yesterday. Mm-hmm. Every once in a while we watch oh, a movie. Did she have a good time. I go I go every week. I go. We're gonna watch this movie this week. You want to watch it with me? No. <laughs> but this week she goes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. My wife loves California. Aww. She loves old Holly or of Beverly Hills. Uh-huh. And, in LA, that's where she went to school. Hmm. She spent like four or five years of her life back, so she back then. A lot back more when, back when it was really fun to live there. Back before it was, you know, 
a, a hellscape. But um, she, she really liked the 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 nostalgia part of this movie because that's what this movie is. That right now, there's a lot of nostalgia in in, in the first one for us. Yeah, we we watching it. Yeah, I didn't and seeing it as as them not being ironic, just being a kind of a time capsule of the time. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I loved about the movie. It was really you know fun. what I thought was really funny was the difference between the first one and the fourth one, where everything that he did in the first one, everybody just fell for it. Yeah. And then when he's trying to to trick people in the in this latest one, they're like, "Fuck off!" Yeah, man. that was that was real because I'm watching the first one for the first time. I was like, "How's this shit working?" Right. Like there were so many things like, "Well, I'm a black man. How dare you not charge me for this room?" And I'm like. <laughs> And he's like, brother, no. Yeah, that was a good no. moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of moments in the beginning in the first one where he was like trying to do this whole facade and he's acting and he's he's playing up the race card and he's doing all this stuff. And to me, it just fell flat. And I'm like, nobody fucking falls for that shit. Check Rolling Stone magazine's Axel Foley. That's what it is. <laughs> and to see the new one where he tries all those same tricks and they don't work, I was like, that's clever. Because people got smarter. That's clever. I like that shit. That's good. Um yeah, but, it was kind of funny because like there's a moment here where he goes to the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, and uh, you know he pulls that uh, you know that the race that, card. The, well, not the race card. Well, oh, well yeah, he pretends to be a reporter for Rolling Stone, yeah. interviewing Michael Jackson, and they're just like, oh my yeah. goodness, yeah, they just and, believe and, him, yeah, and, and and they're like, it'll be two hundred dollars a night, sir. And I turned to Jude, I was like, That's I, I wish, <laughs> yeah, going to be thirty five dollars a night, sir. Fine. For a sweet? <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cheap. Um I'm gonna be honest. I can't, I felt I had to watch this movie twice because I fell asleep. I just I didn't really? like the first one. I just wasn't into it. I, it didn't captivate me. I wasn't really the jokes weren't landing for me. Eddie got a little annoying at times, especially with his goofy laugh. There's some gold for sure. The get the fuck out of here. Like that's my favorite bit. Yeah. Like that whole every Bronson time he does that show shit. Is my favorite so part. funny. Yeah. So funny. The rest of the movie is kind of like meh. But I can't wait to talk about the fourth one because yeah. for some reason, remember how you guys always joke with me about like, especially because the last movie that I did this with was also an Eddie movie, right. Eddie Murphy movie where coming to America, coming to America too, or coming to America. Um, that movie didn't, everything fell flat for me and I hadn't seen the first one. And I'm like, well, I, I think it should stand on its own. Like just, it should just be funny Stop by itself. To make this a thing. It shouldn't have to rely so much on the first one that it, like just all the jokes don't land unless you've seen the first three or whatever. Um, that I love was, that this is the hill you're still with. I'm, st- I'm dying on this hill because that's not the case with this one. I watched the fourth one. And I thought it was freaking awesome. I'm like, this is a good ass movie. And yeah, everything. But, but if you didn't have the context of the first one, right. a lot of that stuff wouldn't have landed. I, I disagree. I disagree because I fell asleep would, during the first one. Would, would you have known Bronson Pinchot's character? I don't know who that is. Who, who? Would you have known any of the characters I'm in the with. fourth one if without watching the first one? Would you have understood his relationship with the cops? Would you? I would have. Yeah. You know, I mean, you would have. Because I I'm not the only well thing, the only thing is the, first the only thing it's new <laughs> the only thing it's new in the fourth one is this daughter that came out of nowhere, out, <laughs> out of nowhere. So. yeah that you know it's so interesting with the first one because it was produced by Don Simpson and Jerry, and Jerry Bruckheimer who were just kind of like coming off of I think uh, Top Gun if it wasn't like the same year um, but like you know they were the future like super blockbuster producers in sure. Hollywood. Eddie Murphy was kind of like, you know, his career was just starting to take off. Yeah. And uh, the guy who actually directed this movie, Martin Brest, so he went on to do Son of a Woman, and his last movie was Geely. Uh, oh. With, with J- J- <laughs> J-Lo and Ben Affleck. Yikes. I, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, Matt, but I don't think people, like of Alex's generation, I don't think they understand really how big of a star mm. Eddie Murphy was. Mm. In the eighties, so this- he was fucking huge. You could not get away from it. Was Madonna, <laughs> Eddie Murphy, um, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise. You know, yeah. then 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 Will Smith came after Eddie Murphy, kind of filled that role. Oh, like the 90s, he, late yeah, 90s. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so Eddie Murphy was a monster. He's a force of nature. Sure, huge back then. This so. movie came out um, the same year as Ghostbusters, and it beat Ghostbusters. Whoa, yeah. Uh, that that puts it into context. That's so when she said three hundred million off seventy five, whatever, didn't shock me at all. <laughs> I, I just, off of thirteen, yeah, yeah. I, I was I was trying to just like figure. This makes sense. The why numbers, four of them. I was, I was, yeah. So yeah. Um, as far as um, like detective 
slash comedy action movies. How, how does this guy, how does this land for you guys? Kadesh, I'm, t- I'm pointing at you more because you, you're a Kadesh connoisseur of all types of movies. Well, so, you know, I grew up on Beverly Hills Cop, but I actually think Beverly Hills Cop 2 is the best of the series. Um, this one, I, I kind of agree with you, Alex. Like, it, it, it was never something that was, like, so laugh-out-loud funny, and I think that's what made it interesting. Mm-hmm. Like, there was, like, an actual mystery to it, and Eddie Murphy kind of, like, brought that humor in, and him and, uh, what's his name, Michael Rosenbaum, or Rosenblum, uh, Billy, the actor who plays Billy. Judge Reinhold? Judge Reinhold, yes, thank you. <laughs> Michael Rosenbaum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm the destroyer of, of words and names. <laughs> Judge um, Reinhold, Billy Rosewood. Yes, Judge Reinhold, um, and... Uh, Ronnie Cox, who you yeah. know Vader likes to point out, is like everyone's best, favorite villain. Best bad guy ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but but he was actually a good He's guy. He's a good guy in this one. Yeah, yeah. And and w- w- what's funny is uh, the guy who played Taggart as well. Um, so Eddie Murphy would basically like this was not a funny script. This was not mm-hmm. a, a comedy script. Eddie Murphy came in and injected a lot of like ad libbing into the script when they were shooting. And that brought in the humor. And there are moments in this, especially like in the, the super cop moment where Eddie Murphy is basically like talking about how, uh, you know, they, they foiled this robbery at a strip club and that Taggart and, and Billy were, uh, were like super cops. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can see like there's a moment where the guy who plays Taggart, like he's like this and it looks like, you know, he's, he's like, just like Axel just shut up. But it was actually the actor trying not to laugh <laughs> off, <laughs> off, off of Eddie Murphy's just like riffs. And, um, this entire movie was like that, where like basically there were so many takes that were ruined because pe- the cast and crew would just start breaking character and laughing when Eddie Murphy would go off on these things. And so like I actually think that some of the the funnier bits in, in, in this movie weren't like the most funny things because those got ruined by by people laughing mm. and and breaking characters. Is there so. outtakes? Oh, there's got to be right. Probably, Probably like outtakes someone. real for Beverly Hills. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop. I kind of doubt it. Mm. I, I don't know if, if they actually kept a lot of that stuff in, in those days for preservation. Um, but essentially, like this movie kind of redefined the action comedy, and that was kind of like what Don Simpson and Jerry Bruckheimer, as super producers, kind of like pioneered in the '80s was like this idea of the action comedy, as opposed to like a straight up like you know popcorn yeah. movie, event movie stuff like that, and it it led to like a whole like kind of like subgenre of of stuff. Yeah, um, 1987 the first Lethal Weapon came out, which is one of my favorite buddy cop comedy action movies franchise. Like I I love so all those movies. This one missed you. This one missed me, but le- for whatever reason, I, I think it's probably cuz I'm a fan of of uh Mel Gibson. Um Lethal Weapon is like that's the buddy cop comedy that I know of. Beverly Hills Cop totally missed it. <laughs> I've never watched it. I was like, I guess this is going to be the first time and I I just couldn't get into it. But for whatever reason, the fourth one just hit me. I was laughing out loud. I had a great time with the with the the newest one on Netflix. I was shocked because I didn't like the first one. I was like, oh, I'm probably not going to like this. Probably not going to land for me. These jokes probably gonna, I'm not going <laughs> to get it. But despite the fact that I'm not super familiar with all these characters, I had a blast. Yeah, I mean, I mean what, what's funny about the fourth one? I guess we'll get into it in a little bit. Yeah, it, is that it followed the uh, Beverly Hills Cop two formula mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to a T. Yeah, right? like, like just beat for beat, that movie was Beverly Hills Cop two essentially. And Beverly Hills Cop 2 kind of like took all the best parts of the original Beverly Hills Cop and refined it. And you had a situation there where you had Eddie Murphy at, at like the, the top of his, the height of his career, of his popularity. You had Tony Scott, Ridley Scott's brother, who basically like, you know, made so many like iconic action movies. He was the director of Top Gun and all this other stuff. Um, Brigitte Nielsen, mm-hmm. um, you know, like she was just coming off of like Rocky, I believe. Um, and Had she done Cobra yet? No, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not sure, but es- essentially, like uh, you had the situation where Beverly Hills Cop Two was so good. Like I grew up watching that movie and loving it, and then you get to Beverly Hills Cop Three, and that was directed by John Landis, who was a uh, comedy director. Like he wasn't really like an action movie guy, and that movie was just so freaking ridiculous because at that time, uh, Eddie Murphy's career was on the downswing. Uh, he had done a, a string of flops. He was um, kind of depressed, and he also um, wanted the character of Axel Foley to kind of like mature a little, so he wasn't doing a lot of the comedic stuff uh, that he had done in the previous two movies. And uh, one of the things I loved about the fourth one is like when he's sitting there with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and he's going through like his like oh yeah file. they make the reference to it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they they literally talked about like you know the, the year each movie came out yeah and then uh, with the third one uh, he, uh, he's it, like not your best work yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> police this is from eighty four then there's one from eighty seven 
And then 94. Not your finest hour. Taggart. <laughs> it's just a stupid joke, but it landed really well for yeah. me. Yeah, so um, overall, the the Beverly Hills Cop series as a whole, like I, I feel like it had two good movies and then like one bad movie, and it ended on like a bad note. And Eddie Murphy came back with the fourth movie. And after the third movie kind of came out and flopped, uh, he basically said, like, if I'm going to do another Beverly Hills Cop movie, I'm going to take the time and the care to do it right. And right. I feel like he nailed it. With, I agree. With the fourth one. I agree. Uh, do we have any final thoughts on the first one before we do? Should we rate it? Should we, I, I don't know if it's fair for me to rate it. I didn't like it. I'm, it's going to be like a like a two-star movie for me. I just I just didn't like it. I fell asleep twice. I had to rewatch it. And I just The jokes didn't land. Mm -hmm. Not a good time for me. I need to go watch the second one because apparently it's a banger. So I'm probably <laughs> going to do that very soon. I love the second one. Um, because honestly, because the fourth one made me so interested in these characters. Judge Reynolds, John Ashton, all these all these awesome characters. Uh, uh, Paul Reiser, yeah. like the bad guy from Aliens. <laughs> you know, like, like I want to go back and rewatch these. who he is to you? Yeah. Okay. Who is he to you? Uh, he's in he, he mad, about mad About You. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Mad About I'm You mad. with Helen Hunt. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I've watched that show when I was growing up. But yeah, Aliens Aliens is the movie that I know him the most from. Yeah, I can see that. It's Burke, you know? He's the dick. That, Burke! That corporate Burke. fucking God sellout. God damn it, Burke! God damn it, Burke! <laughs> um, yeah, two for me. What about you for the first um, one? It, it's been so long since I've seen this movie, but I had a good time watching it. It was a nice, fun trip down back to ninth grade, <laughs> you know, because that's that was when it came out. Um, I, I'm going to put it right, right in there, like around three stars. Okay. You know? Not the best movie I ever made, but far from the worst. And I had a good time. And, you know, it's Eddie Murphy. Sure. I love that you have, like, the hot oh. chick from, from the first one's IMDb. Up she was, on, she was pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm going to go, I, I'm gonna go three and a half. I'm going to go three and a half. Three, was there boobs? There's boobs. There was. So I got to get a yeah, half star for boobs. Strip club. Yeah. Oh, to, oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. I do remember that. Yeah. Two and a half. So. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. All right. Uh, Jude? Um, so, in the realm of buddy cop movies or Eddie Murphy movies. I, I had a great time with this. This was my favorite one of the ones that we watched this week. And I liked it more than I thought I was going to. Hmm. And maybe it was because I went in thinking I wasn't going to like it that I did. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do three get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. No, no I cannot. It's serious. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, Kadesh. Yeah, I, um, I'm kind of with Vader on this where like it doesn't hold up as well as like the, the second one does in my opinion. But it's still not a bad movie. Like you, you know, like we we get introduced to the culture clash between Detroit and Beverly Hills, not just Beverly Hills, but Beverly Hills of the '80s. You mm -hmm. know? Uh, but uh, we get to see Axel Foley as a very competent cop, and I love the interaction. Uh, you, you know, with like the Beverly Hills cops, where you know at first, like you, you know, like the first thing Taggart does is punch Eddie Murphy in the gut, and Eddie Murphy is like, "Man, we don't rat on cops," you know? <laughs> like, stuff like that. And then uh, the whole. Uh, kind of uh, relationship between Taggart and Billy where, you know, like they're on the stakeout and Billy's just like, you know, I'm concerned that you're eating too much red meat. <laughs> <laughs> like, like little things like that. And Eddie Murphy is kind of like a uh, whole thing where like he's, he's part scam artist, part cop, part criminal, part cop. Uh, he's, he's like, I got thrown out a window. He's like, you're arresting me for getting thrown out a window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and also, did you guys notice that the main henchman in this movie? Oh, yeah. Is uh, Mike from ba Breaking Bad? Yep, Jonathan oh, yeah. Banks. Yep, yep Jonathan Young Banks. Jonathan Banks. Very young. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I, I think my uh, favorite line in this movie uh, was, no, 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 it was in the second one. It's in the second one. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the, the whole movie, he kept saying, my favorite line is in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming up. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, awesome. But I, I love that we get to see kind of like how life is in, in Detroit, right? Before we, we get to Beverly Hills, because you, you got the sergeant who's just, you know, constantly berating Eddie Murphy. You got uh, Michael uh, Reiser. Is that his name? Paul, mm -hmm. Paul, Paul Reiser. Paul Reiser. Uh, who's like his his belabored partner and all this stuff. And then like you get to Beverly Hills and it's like a completely different like, you know, culture. And j just revisiting the Beverly Hills of the 80s was, I think, you know, to mm -hmm. put it to Matt's point, it was so much fun because L.A. was so different in the so 80s different. than than it is nowadays. And so like to get to go back and kind of, kind of see that. And the first movie is actually a far more serious movie than I think the the rest of the Beverly Hills cops are. And I think it was just because, like, you, you had a dramatic director and action movie producers who teamed up with a comedian and basically, you know, let him loose and got this, like, weird mishmash where, like, they hadn't figured out the formula quite yet. 
But by the time you get to Beverly Hills Cop 2, they have that formula down. And I was, I, I enjoyed watching the entire series uh, leading up to the fourth one. So uh, three stars, definitely, for the first one. Cool. All right. All right. On that note, we're going to be talking about the fourth one that just came out. Uh, July 3rd release on Netflix. It is available right now. Uh, let's get into it. Jude, take All it away. All right, sir. 2024 Beverly Hills Cop Axel F. Rated R with a runtime of one hour, 58 minutes. This had zero financial information uh, on Get the fuck out of here. (laughs) So I will go right into the synopsis. Go for it. Billy (laughs) is in trouble. So Aquel teams up with his daughter, a Beverly Hills attorney, to solve the case he was working on when he disappeared. Luckily, the second we all saw Kevin Bacon on the the screen, he (laughs) solved the case. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. I love that Kevin Bacon is just leaning into the villain role lately yeah. like he's just he's found a new villain era he loves it dude yeah, yeah it's, you, he looks like he's having a great time with yeah. it yeah he gets to wear a suit he's a sleazy douchebag yeah. you know oh, ex yeah. you know uh, uh not ex cop what is it um uh i don't know just dirty cop whatever yeah. yeah yeah uh he's he's chewing this role up okay i gotta talk about one thing it's the henchmen in this movie stood out to me so much i was watching them like, like 80s henchmen i'm like oh my god that is dolph lundgren uh-huh. And fucking like Ray Liotta or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, this is crazy. I love that they did it so on purpose because, like, you don't see 80s villains in movies anymore. Yeah. Right. And yeah. for an Axel Foley, Beverly Hills cop, <clears throat> like, movie coming out, I'm like, that fits so perfect. I love the whole 80s soundtrack, too. Oh, oh yeah. 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 They brought but, it right back. You know, it was so subtle, though. Because I remember watching the first one, that's like, it, dun, 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 dun. it got on my nerves a while because they used it so fucking much and it well, was I mean, so there was, loud. There was other stuff in there too. There was. But in this, in the fourth one, it's always like it's changed depending on what's happening in the movie. Uh-huh. The the mood of the song changes. It's still the same theme, mm-hmm. but it just like it's different instruments or whatever. I love that fact. It was just a nice little touch. And I was like, okay, I see what you're doing, movie. Good job. <laughs> but, but the music cues made it feel like an 80s movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which is part of this movie's charm. It's basically an 80s movie yeah. with uh, a couple of modern day actors in it. You know, part of me rather get locked up for resisting arrest than get put in this little Fisher Price looking motherfucker. Y'all rolling around in. Yes, right. 100%. A um, couple of old guys. Yeah, I, I liked, I mean, I don't know, man. I liked everything about this movie. I had a surprisingly good time. Like, I thought Eddie Murphy was on point with everything. He was perfectly comedic when he needed to be he was serious when he needed to be his range was great mm-hmm. i feel like he was a little one-dimensional in the early well, ones he and was, he's a talented dude he very he very much is i just like in the in the early movies i felt like he was just being like hardcore stand-up comedian eddie murphy in a movie and yeah it, it kind of took me out of it a little bit but in this one he was fucking acting mm-hmm. and it, it felt good watching him i'm like oh yeah because he was he's having confrontations with his daughter He's getting berated by his old buddy that's now like kind of in on this like dirty cop thing. And he's I like, bro, what hated the- Taggart in this one. He was a dick. Yeah. But he came through at the end. But I kind of like the but, but Taggart's always been a kid. Yeah, 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 but I like the but fact now that he's a lazy cop <laughs> that all of this shit is going on right under his nose. No. And the juxtaposition between Paul Reiser's character, who's now the chief, and Taggart's character, sure. who's now the chief. And Taggart's shitty. <laughs> but, but what's funny is so, so like in the third movie, Taggart basically retired and that's what one of the reasons he wasn't in it uh the other reason was like you know scheduling conflicts with him and ronnie cox and so like neither of them were in the third one but uh for this movie they brought him back out of retirement and the reason for it was because in in the second one the running joke is that you know he's having trouble with his marriage Mm -hmm. and then like he fixes his marriage and he doesn't want to be at home with his wife so he goes back to work (laughs) That bit made me made me laugh. He's sitting there with his like desk full of pills, and he's like, "What do you mean I can't take the liver pill and the freaking cholesterol pill at the same time? What the hell?" Wait, pill with the liver pill? Is that right? Uh, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, Marie, relax. I haven't even been taking them yet. It was classic. It was good. Um, Taggart was the character that I think he needed to be in this movie. I, I agree with you. He was kind of a like he was an asshole and he was lazy, and he's kind of like. Uh, turning a blind eye to all this crime that's happening right under his nose. I get what you're saying, Jude, but I think he needed to be that person because there there had to be some kind of a redemption for him, like I'm a redemption sorry, arc. But you believe Kevin Bacon over your partner of 30 years? <laughs> but he trained Kevin Bacon. I trained him myself. Did He's a good guy. guy. <laughs> did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> I love, dude, the scene where he takes his daughter up to like that penthouse thing and they like fake their way through with mm-hmm. the, the fire department thing. Yeah. That felt legit. Yeah. <laughs> like, when he's like faking people out about the hotel, especially that one in this uh, in this movie where he's like, Bon appetit. 
And I was wondering if... You know, to hell with this. I'm just too tired. Do you have any rooms available? I'm too fucking tired for this shit. Yeah. Can I just get a room, please? I'll just pay for it. It was like nine hundred dollars or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, God damn it, I love Beverly Hills. Accurate. Yeah. Accurate. Yeah. Nine hundred and forty dollars a night plus tax. I love Beverly Hills. Um, and he goes up to this this uh, penthouse like little pool party that they're having on top of this roof, and they're like, Yeah, um, we're with the fire marshal. He's trying to fake his way through, and the guy's like, just not buying it. Here's and the- his daughter comes in and uses the right vernacular for like 2024, like you're in shit trouble. Yeah. And he's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Also, here's my major problem with this movie is the fact that Axel Foley has been wearing the same Detroit jacket for 40 fucking years. It's and he's like, he I'm I'm a fire marshal. The fuck you are, dude. <laughs> he's comfortable in you're his jacket. You're the fire marshal in Beverly Hills wearing the, a, Detroit a Detroit Lions jacket. jacket and jeans and like Swiss. What are they called? The The... K-Swiss. K-Swiss <laughs> shoes or whatever. Yeah. I get what you're saying. That bit, I, does is that like a famous outfit that he wears in the other movies? Yeah, so basically I mean, every movie. He, he wears, wears it every movie, yeah. but it really gets on my fucking nerves. <laughs> <laughs> he changed into a suit in this movie. A purple suit for thirty nine ninety nine. Fly ass suit. Fly ass for thirty nine ninety nine. It's a fly ass suit. <laughs> I can't even get a cup of coffee in Beverly Hills for thirty nine ninety nine. Only fifty dollars for this suit. I got it for thirty nine ninety nine. It's yikes. For thirty nine ninety nine, this suit is off the chain, Jane. One of the biggest criticisms about it was um, that I've heard, at least, is about the daughter and about how like Eddie Murphy's a deadbeat dad mm-hmm. and like it was all about the daughter, not him. And I completely disagree with with that critique because to me the probably the most interesting part of this movie was the relationship between eddie murphy and his daughter Mm -hmm. uh he wasn't a deadbeat dad he was basically just kind of like you know um like he sent them away to keep his wife and his child safe but like uh they they make it clear that it's been about five years since they spoke and uh eddie murphy wants to be a, a better dad he just doesn't know how to be and so, like, uh, because he doesn't have anything else going on for him, like, he just throws himself into work. Um, but, uh, you know, having watched the third movie, like, like they never flat out came out and said it, but, like, I believe that the woman from the third movie mm-hmm. was the woman that he married and had this kid with because she looks just like that actress. Yeah, she does. Uh, but they never flat out say, like, that that's the woman that, like, you know, like, he started a family with. But I really liked the the, the, the dynamic because for – you know, in the first movie, he has like his female friend from Detroit that he kind of goes around and investigates with. And then in the second movie, uh, it's it's Taggart and Billy that he goes around investigating with. And in this movie, it was like his daughter. And there was a lot of great tension there. There was a lot of great kind of like back and forth. Um, and it was about them kind of like learning about each other and, and about like how they both made mistakes. And Eddie Murphy finally having to kind of like accept responsibility for being uh, you know, like kind of like a bad dad. Mm-hmm. Um, but him, like by by the end, you, you know, like like that was a journey. That was something where it's like they came together as father and daughter. And Eddie Murphy literally almost like sacrificed his life in order to like save her. And and so like I feel like that was really like the spine of this movie was like Eddie Murphy or Axel Foley and his daughter mm-hmm. yeah. coming together. Trying to rebuild and, that relationship. Yeah. And and so like I don't look at that as like an actual like bad thing. I don't look at the criticism of like, oh, it, it's it's woke because of the, you know, focus yeah, on, I didn't, on this girl. Or yeah, I didn't get, I that, didn't get that. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think if like there's, it's easy to paint the father as some piece of shit deadbeat uh, in movies and TV shows these days. It's, it's almost a running joke at this point. But mm-hmm. I feel like in this one, like he had his issues, but she also took some of the responsibility by the end of the movie. She's like, look, I blamed you for a lot of things, but honestly, I'm an adult now and I could have called you too. And I could have yep. made it more of it. It was like an equal coming together of the family. I totally agree with you guys. I think it was well done. I think if you're going to use that trope, this is probably one of the I mean, better if, ways if, to do it. If, it. if he was a deadbeat dad, the way some of these people out there are trying to paint him in this movie, he never would have had any oh, relationship yeah, with the kid life. at all. At all. Yeah. It's like, oh, I knocked up some lady 25 years ago. Yeah, I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. I, I did hold no, he, he was there. That wasn't what was going on. She, they just, like, they, they drifted literally apart. in the movie. Yeah. It's like, bad guys threatened my wife and my kids lives yeah so i moved them out yeah okay seems like a pretty smart thing to do <laughs> and then you know you, you move them to beverly hills and you stay which i that was kind of well weird. she went back to beverly hills right but right or whatever the mother but, that's where she was from yeah. we're, we're assuming but we're assuming yeah. that she was from beverly hills so they went to detroit started the family things got hairy she moved back to beverly hills and he stayed in detroit yeah because things got weird um i totally agree with you guys go ahead jude 
Um, so I feel like in a less well written movie, what they would have done with this uh, adult daughter character is they would have made her uh, have kung fu, <laughs> yeah. and also just been really bitchy and mad at her dad the whole movie. But I feel like she was written really smart. Mm -hmm. She and she had her strengths that were different from from his, and they worked well together. Yeah, and uh, I really liked how uh, how they built her character up. And, yeah. and she also, she got scared when she found herself in the middle of a shootout. Yeah. Like, like she wasn't someone who was like, you know, give me your gun, dad. I'm going to yeah. show you. Like, yeah. Yeah. Too, yeah. you know? But I did like, the, like, so she does have these skills that her father taught her. And they went out of their way to talk about this. Like, I taught you how to get out of handcuffs. And I, I showed you how to do this and how to, you know, uh, push back against interrogation and all this stuff. And then later on, we get a set of a payoff where she uses those skills that she says, I, I didn't learn anything from you, dad. Like she said it to him. I didn't learn those things. I forgot how to do all that stuff. <laughs> no, she didn't. No, she didn't. She knew how to do all that shit because she did it at the end of the movie. And she kind of like, she didn't rescue herself by the end, but she did have the skills necessary to get herself out of danger so that her father and her, his partners could come in and help her out. I, I loved how well they tied all three previous movies into this movie. Like you had Serge come back, you know, uh, Balky Bartokamuf, yep. Uh, yep, yep. <laughs> Bronson Pinchow. Hmm. Um, you had Kevin Bacon as a bad guy, and, and it's it's kind of funny because Jude, Jude's like, well, obviously Kevin Bacon's a bad obviously. Guy. Yeah. And, and as <laughs> as soon as I I didn't even have to see him, I saw his name come across the screen. I was like, oh, evil Kevin Bacon. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the minute Axel Foley meets Kevin Bacon's character, he's like, yeah, that guy's the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like I got a sixth sense about this stuff. Yeah. And and it was just kind of it was cool to see like all the older characters from the series like kind of yeah. come back and then introducing the new characters. We got to talk about Joseph Gordon Levitt. Oh, for yeah. sure. This okay. So this is I was gonna wait for this moment. Um, one of my favorite setup and payoffs in this freaking movie was this uh, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt's character. So. Axel clocks that he has a picture of him with like a flight outfit and he's got a helicopter in the background. He's like, oh, you used to be a freaking helicopter pilot. Uh, and he's trying to fuck with him a little bit, <laughs> yeah. right? He's like, oh, it must suck to go from that to a desk job. LAPD air support. So you went from being a big time pilot to patrolling outdoor shopping malls. What happens? You lose your nerve? And he's like, that's just not going to work on me, man. Like, answer the goddamn question. It was like a little bit, it was a nothing line. If it never would have come up again, it would have been whatever. Yeah. They use that one little conversation between the two of them. The very end of the movie where they're finally, they're escaping together. They're getting out of the clutches of evil Kevin Bacon. <laughs> and they go, he's like, I'm going to go to the roof. And he's like, what the fuck are we going to the roof for? The touch negative right now because see, men are trying to kill us, Bobby. And you're a helicopter pilot. And I'm pretty sure that's a fucking helicopter. It's like, because there's a helicopter. And he's like, oh, shit. <laughs> he's like, what? You said you were a helicopter pilot. He's like, I was. And then he gets in the helicopter and he's just the worst. It's terrible. He's so bad. It's awful. And, it freaking and he's like, what's up. wrong with you? He's like, well, I crashed a helicopter I once. Crashed. He's, like, <laughs> he's like, if you would have told me that, I wouldn't have fucking come up with this plan. Dude, this whole bit, that whole ending, like third act little action bit with the helicopter. He's like, I'm going to pass out. Dude. Eddie Murphy just starts smacking him. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> That whole freaking thing was so on point and hilarious and well set up. I was just I was giddy. I was laughing the whole time. Like yeah, this is amazing. Yeah. And Kevin Bacon's driving in his car, like shooting at him. It's like, oh my god, he's trying to shoot me. Like the whole thing was great. I loved it. Then, it was my favorite part. Did you, did you notice where it crashed? On the uh, golf course? Yeah, yeah. It was Shooter McGavin. Shooter McGavin. Yeah. Shooter McGavin. Yeah. Shooter McGavin. <laughs> I was like, is that shooter. A hundred percent. That shooter. There. I'm sitting there in the living room and I'm going, Shooter McGavin. <laughs> yes. And my wife goes, What? Who? <laughs> Like, you don't understand. You gotta know. You gotta know. That's Happy Gilmore. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I don't care if Eddie Murphy goes online and says, that's not actually Shooter. We just like, got that guy. No, it is. No, it 100% uh, is. Absolutely is. 100%. Uh -huh. It also had some nice Wesley Snipes call out. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. not me. That's Wesley Snipes, that actor. Yeah, everybody <laughs> says I look like him. He's like, he is a handsome son of a bitch, though. Because <laughs> they work together in uh, Dolomite, right? They work together in Dolomite and... Um, uh, coming to America. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. also, um, the movie that he did with De Niro, where he's like, can we get a Wesley Snipes type in here? <laughs> yes. so I'm not saying we need Wesley Snipes, but like, we uh, get a Wesley Snipes type. Yeah. What, what movie was that? It was the one where they were filming the uh, reality show, Cop Show. Was it called Cop Show? No. No. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Robert De Niro, Eddie Murphy, and the, uh, Captain Kirk. The, was it the girl? Yeah. Captain Kirk. R Rene Russo? Rene Russo, yeah. I remember that now. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the movie. It was called Showtime. 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 That's right. Showtime. Showtime. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I feel like Eddie Murphy's back, man. Like, he he kind of yeah. like, it, it died. Pluto Nash kind of tanked his career for a while. He took a nice long break, and now he's coming back, and I feel like... He did a bunch of doodles. For, for the most part, I feel like a lot of the modern movies he's doing are, are pretty good. Like, Dolomite is amazing. I love that movie. 
This one's a really good one. What other movie did he come out with recently? I know he's been doing a, a couple smaller ones, I think, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, Coming to America was Coming great, to America. In my opinion. You guys loved it. I it, Vader, it, you've got IMDb up. What has he done uh, besides this recently? Oh, I, I don't know. I was trying to find if Shooter McGavin was in the credits, and he's not even in there. No, he's not in the cast either. No. He should be, though. God damn shooter. Uh, we, yeah. We also had uh, Louise Good- Guzman. Yeah. Like a weird cross-dressing karaoke mm-hmm. drug lord guy. Yeah, that's right. At the at the MS-13 He was bar. like the <laughs> uncle of the whatever hoodlum that his daughter was defending. And- yeah, yeah. Uh, all, look, all in all, I think the story was really good. Uh, I, everything was very believable. Um, it was well written. All the characters were, were done justice. I had a great time with this movie. This is like solid four stars for me. Really? Uh, and I'm not even the <laughs> biggest Beverly Hills Cop fan. Like, I, I, I barely have seen the first one, and I've never seen the second one or the third one. I just, I watched this fourth one. I'm like, God damn, this is a fun movie. And having no context for most of the jokes, they still made me laugh. So that, to me, is the sign of a good sequel. Like, it can stand on its own. It can be funny. And if you go back and watch the other ones, it's even funnier. Not, well, you have to watch it. Otherwise, it's a piece of shit. Like, that's not a good sequel. Um, four stars for me. Four. Matt, wow, that's really how about strong. you, buddy? Wow. Um. I had more fun watching the first movie. <laughs> but I think that's just because I'm 20 years older than you. Sure. And it's just kind of, uh, you know, it is what it is. I like old Eddie. And a new Eddie's good too. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. Um, but this movie felt like they were trying to recapture something with a little bit of a modern twist, which is what they should do. Mm-hmm. But I just like, I like the, uh, I like the, the, the first OG. one, the OG better. Okay. Um, I'm still going to give it three stars. But I can't give it a half star because, you know. There's no poops there's in, this no poops in this one. <laughs> oh, that's it, a shame. It really is. You know? and I, and I think that's kind of a telling thing, you know, the, a modern sure. filmmaking. It's like, put some boobs in your movie. <laughs> you, 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 know, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> you just rolled her eyes I don't so care. Hard. I hopped a little bit, too. Oh, yeah. God. So, yeah. Um, if you're going to make a remake of an 80s movie, and this was kind of a remake. Put some titties. Put some titties in there. You know, there's a lot. Of, and put some F bombs. You know, have there some, was F bombs, weren't there? Yeah, but not as many. No, not there as many. There was a lot of F bombs. No. Well, in yeah, movie. it was way more than I remembered. It's like, holy crap. Especially the police sergeant or whatever back in Detroit. Mm. Foley, what the fuck are you fucking doing, you <laughs> stupid motherfucker? It's like, I love that guy. Wow. It's like, I had forgotten about that, dude. It was sure. like, it was like crazy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, three stars. It was, it was fun. It's nice, nice, uh, cool, fun cop movie, I guess. Okay. I don't know. So, yeah. All right, cool. Jude? Um, I watched too many of these this week. Sure. Um, I liked the first one the best. Uh, I really liked the soundtrack. Mm. I really did not like what they did with Taggart. I don't care mm. that he came back in the end. He was a shitty cop. <laughs> Uh, and I didn't like that that's where they took the character in order to, like, make him be good in the end. I thought that was a stupid storyline. And I really hate that he's still wearing that fucking jacket. <laughs> um, so right down the middle for me, two and a half, get the fuck out of here. Okay, cool. Kitch? I love this movie. Um, <laughs> second one's still my favorite, but this is definitely like right up there with Beverly Hills Cop 2. Um, the funniest scene in this movie, in my opinion, was when they were pretending to be like the house shoppers and they, they went oh to go God, take that. Oh my real that. estate agent chick was hilarious. <laughs> oh, oh she, was so, she was so funny. <laughs> I, like, you could tell like she was just ad-libbing the fuck out of Oh God, movie. it was but, so but, classic. But, but that, that, that felt more like the original Beverly Hills Cop yeah. there. And then you also had Bronson Pinchow as Surge. And you even had like uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt and the daughter mm-hmm. kind of getting in on the act as well. Uh, so like uh, th- that was definitely my favorite scene. I feel like I've met that woman before. Yeah, she was yeah, on. Totally. She's been on. She was on SNL. Yeah. No, I feel like I've met her in real life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably. And and like just everything about this movie hit the right notes. Like the soundtrack made it feel like you know an '80s you know action movie. I love the interplay between Eddie Murphy and his daughter. I also like the interplay between him and uh, jo- Joseph Gordon Levitt. I loved all the original <laughs> characters coming back into it, and it ended on the perfect note. It ended on Eddie Murphy getting into the backseat of, of the car with Taggart mm-hmm. and, and yeah. Billy, you know, j- just like when they were like staking him out in the uh, first movie <laughs> and they ended it on Eddie Murphy, Axel Foley's line, trust me. And, and they didn't do that in the third movie, unfortunately, but in all the good movies <laughs> they, they did. And I feel like if they don't make ever like another Beverly Hills Cop movie, that's the scene I want to go out remembering these characters by. Sure. Because it was just, it hit, this movie was great at hitting all the perfect notes 
that it needed to hit for a Beverly Hills Cop continuation. And if they make another one, which I, part of me kind of hopes that they do, <laughs> I hope that they stick with this type of thing because like it just, it felt like it belonged in the series. Yeah. Whereas like the third one, I just felt it was like you could erase that and and not have to worry about it anymore. But overall, uh, two still my favorite. This one's very close uh, on my second favorite list, four stars. All right, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching the show. Really do appreciate it. Go check out uh, the Beverly Hills Cop Axel F, which is basically Beverly Hills Cop as fuck, right? Is that the, that the that's what they were trying to go for? I think. No, his name is Axel Foley. I know it's Axel Foley, but but but, it's, but, but the theme song is it's, Axel F. Is it? That's, yeah, that's what it's called. I thought they were going for like AF. I like your story better, man. Right. Beverly Hills Cop as fuck. Like that's what I got out of that. But whatever. No, I'm dirty, I guess. Eddie Murphy. Come on, man. You're telling me Eddie Murphy didn't think about that? No. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> Thanks, Jude. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> All right, you folks. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. I uh, do appreciate you guys checking us out. If you want to support the show, go to saltinerclub.com. If you want to just join up into the community, go to saltinerdiscord.com. We have a lot of fun stuff going on over there as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll see you guys next week. Stay salty. $130,000. Get the fuck out of here. No, I cannot. It's serious because it's very important. Peace.